Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Back out here in the Tonto National Forest and we're gonna do some uh, field experiments today and we're gonna look at something that I like to term field expedient digital communications. I've written some software called MCOM tools and we're gonna try our hand at uh, its first maiden voyage out here to test out some APRS. Um, not Winlink today, but it does support it. And uh, we're also gonna try to look at some of the capabilities on an all band, all mode radio, like the Yaesu FT817, 18, and 857D. And if you're not into digital, stick around because uh, I know you guys like the gear too. I have a new station set up for my uh, TPA uh, 817, 818. All right, see you guys up there. Oh, and check out this spot over here. That was the, uh, the peak we were on last week on the, uh, the western side. And we're just gonna do a short trek up this peak. I think it's gonna be a 15 minute hike. And then to cut a few miles, I decided to bring the old Jeepster. All right, I'll see you up there. All right, guys, I just got to uh, camp, set it all up. Let's take a quick look at my station setup. I have my uh, tarp shelter set up with my trekking poles. Uh, Chill the Nerd on Instagram, one of my followers recommended that I actually run my solar panels when I get here. So we're running the Powerfilm 20 watt panels. For antennas today, we're gonna be using the Pactena Trek mount. Since we're gonna be working with both um, FM and single sideband, we're gonna run it in both configurations. Right now it is in the vertical configuration with the Comet BNC24 antenna. And then I have another one as a ground plane. When we switch over to the single sideband net, we're gonna run, take off the, uh, the vertical and have our horizontal dipole. Uh, like before, incredibly difficult to guy out the system here. There's a lot of rocks. And again, not a whole lot of room. We're gonna be running my smaller QRP radio. This is the Yaesu FT818 with the TPA pack frame from, from Armorlock. And I've reconfigured this. I was previously running this in the Hazard 4 objective camera bag. And I found this $30 Helicon e e pouch and fully modified it because I wanted to run it similar to um, what I have in my larger rig, my 857. I'm running the um, PRC-117 golf pouch. So uh, if you're interested, check out my Instagram because I did a full custom job on that. And it's a really nice package. So we're going to do digital, SSB, FM, all that here. Um, and then I've got the um, power pole, uh, power mini uh, in here, and I've got the uh, Anderson or the power going to the solar panel. Um, I'm gonna make some more coffee and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and run some experiments. And it looks like we're, we're all set to go. All right, guys, we're finally set to get going. Let me take a quick sip of my coffee. And today we're gonna talk about my vision for field expedient digital communications and also field um, expedient communications in general. And I built everything around the uh, TPA 817 pack frame, the Yaesu FT818, the Raspberry Pi, and uh, just this small package that uh, you see somewhere here on the screen. And my goal is that um, while I've enjoyed using um, APRS and Winlink for sending emails without grid tie, sending text messages, station to station messages, getting weather, weather reports, uh, sending out location beacons. Um, there's too much software involved for me to, um, in the field at least, for me to get one running and then switch over to the other. There's a whole kind of shutdown process of some services I need to do. I have to spin up a whole bunch of other ones. Then I need to log into something called VNC so I can have like a desktop and I typically just carry my my phone and it's just not ideal. I've done it out here a few times. Um, you've seen it on the channel. So I've written a uh, API and a small web application called MCOM Tools. And basically it runs on the Pi. I can access it from my phone through a web browser and I'm able to easily, uh, within a couple clicks of a button, send out Winlink emails or switch over to a completely different mode like APRS and do all of the messaging there. Um, the application still is in a prototype phase and I'm documenting the adventure 
and the build on buymeacupofcoffee.com. Uh, first of all, thank you for everybody who uh, has bought me a cup of coffee there and is supporting me. It's not required, all the posts there are public, but I do post one or two small 60 second videos per week, uh, just documenting what I'm doing. And we'll see a bit of that here as well. So I'm gonna reorient the camera and uh, we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, the digital system here. And we're gonna see if we can go ahead and send out some messages. And then we'll probably switch over to the SSB net that starts here in about half an hour. All right, so let's do this together. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can do a walkthrough of looking at WinLink as it starts up and then also switching over to APRS. So we're recording right now the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and go to settings and I wanna make sure that I'm connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot on the Pi and that's HAM1, which we are. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do since my Pi starts by default for WinLink, we're gonna to go to the Pi's IP address, which I think is 192.168.2.1 and port 8080. And that is the default Pat WinLink interface. And I like uh, the design that Pat WinLink has done because it basically, in my mind, is a example of a good headless application and it works well on small screen sizes. Now, if I had the HF antenna hooked on, I could go ahead and start uh, sending, receiving uh, messages and doing all that good stuff. But I know that works, but let's go ahead and switch over to my application, which runs on port B, you're gonna die here in a second. Port 1981. And uh, that's pretty cool. So by default, basically it has some placeholder text for features I haven't built out yet, but we can see that it's on. I can pull for the Pi status. You can see it's been up for now four minutes. And in terms of the modes there, you can actually see that uh, WinLink RDOP is running. Now I can go ahead and turn that off and it will actually go and shut down uh, Pat WinLink and the RDOP modem completely. Now there is one small bug here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on APRS. It's really just an issue with the state here. So I gotta turn it on, turn it off, turn it back on again. So off and now we'll turn it back on. And when we do that, we get now a context-aware mode uh, piece that gets rendered APRS. And for field expedient communications, what I've done is I created like templates. So if I click here, you can actually see I've got a template for sending uh, APRS spots for SODA, for email to, for my call sign at uh, home, my call sign in the Jeep, SMS gate, who is, and a few other things. So for example, let's say that I wanna send uh, an SMS gate message and hit done here. By default, it populates the two, which is the SMS gate SSID with a message already pre-canned for my wife. So I should just be able to do send here. And uh, if it works, we should see a message on the console that it is trying to send this packet out to a station and hopefully that'll relay, relay it on our behalf. So we just sent out a packet um, I won't be able to get a confirmation, but that's really it. And the cool thing about this templating idea that I came up with is that I can create as many as I want. Let's say that I want to send one to myself. I have an alias for my phone number called YouTube. And live demo is the message I'll put in. And let's go ahead and send that. And I think, I think I'm up high enough where this should work. All right, we're gonna do a few other tests here and then we'll see how many actually go through um, either after this video is done or um, if I'm able to get LTE, I should be able to see if that message came through. Um, APRS to SOTA is another cool one. Let me click that. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the format, but basically I have to put in the the peak, so WA, W7A stroke mic November 064. Uh, the frequency I'm going to be on, like 144.410. The mode FM, my call, and then a comment. It's a lot to remember, but at least now I can go in and just modify that or add another template. So I'm not going to send it because I don't want to spot myself. Um, I can send a station, a message to my station that's down in the Jeep. Um, 
But let's try something else real quick. Uh, I think it was Jason KM4ACK said he had an SSID on number two. So let me change this to, where's Jason? KM4ACK seven and two, okay. KM4ACK two. And we're gonna go ahead and send Jason this message. Freaking planes. All right, guys, I don't know if I've bricked anything, but you kind of get the point there. Um, the other thing we can do here is I can turn off that service and it'll go through and shut everything off. Um, I can clear the screen here. Um, actually, I think I bricked something here pretty bad. Okay, it'll be curious to see what actually uh, goes out and has made it. Um, but then I could also turn this thing off and it actually will send a shutdown message to the Pi. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that one message did go out. And what I wanna do is turn off airplane mode. And if you get enough LTE, I'm wondering if that text message will come through. Oh, cool. I don't know if you guys, I hope we're still recording. Uh, Jason KM4ACK got the message. Uh, so that went through, fantastic. And then, yeah, awesome. Great success. So literally, guys, I have no access to uh, the internet, no cell coverage. We were in airplane mode. And using that tool, I was actually able to just use my phone, talking to a little bit of software I wrote on the Pi called MCOM Tools. Through the radio, we probably hit a station about like 80 miles away from here. That one basically relayed it to another station. And Jason KM4 ACK all the way in Tennessee got it. So I'm going to call this an absolute success. And um, Jason, thank you so much for helping me do the testing. Um, I'll put his channel down below. He's got a great channel. All right, guys, now that this is all done, I'm going to start playing some, not playing. I've got a viewer who hates it when I say play radio. I'm going to, I don't know what we should call it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to switch over to single sideband and FM and have fun this morning. But hopefully you guys get a taste for what I mean when I'm talking about field expedient digital communications. There's going to be a ton of features coming here. So like I said, feel free to follow the um, Buy Me a Coffee uh, blog posts. Again, you don't have to support me if you don't want to. Want to. Um, all the posts are completely public. And I also have links to YouTube videos that you can't see on my normal feed because they're all unlisted. Again, completely free if you guys want it. I gotta tell you guys, I love two meter SSB. This is the uh, Arizona SWAT net down in Tucson. This is KT1 RUN on a hilltop. Uh, can someone come back to me just to confirm my station before the net starts? There was two at once there. I couldn't tell who all that was. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if you're putting your order in, I can uh, put you on the list for pancake. Yeah, Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. The name is Gaston. I like pancakes, and I'm sitting on top of a peak here in New River, Arizona. Uh, Delta Mike 33. Yeah, 73. Guys, two meter si single sideband is freaking amazing. And we're out here. You know what? I may not even do field day 2021. Um, I do field day every single weekend. I encourage everybody to do the same thing. The airwaves aren't as packed. You can pick the right conditions. Um, it's gonna be 110 here today, but um, right now it still feels like it's in the low, ooh, low to mid 80s but it's going to climb pretty quickly all right i'm going to sign off guys uh i this video is has uh, showcased my add at its finest but um i'm the tech prepper be strong be safe and be prepared
things I do for you guys. I love you. Ah, appreciate all the support.